Hi, my name is Caroline Geschwind, and I'm a freshman at the University of Arkansas, majoring in computer science and double minoring in art history and psychology. Today, I will be looking into Norman Rockwell's 1943 Rosie the Riveter, currently located at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. Crystal Bridges is a convenient 26 miles from campus and focuses on the nature, architecture, and art of the American people. One of America's most beloved illustrators, Rockwell painted Rosie the Riveter as the cover for the May 29, 1943 Saturday Evening Post. Rockwell painted over 300 magazine covers for the Saturday Evening Post from 1916 to 1963. Born in 1894 in New York City, Norman Rockwell studied at the National Academy of Design and the Art Students League. Rosie the Riveter was modeled by 19-year-old phone operator Mary Doyle O'Keefe in Arlington, Vermont. The Saturday Evening Post printed propaganda posters of Rosie the Riveter and Rockwell's Four Freedoms and joined forces with the U.S. Department of Treasury on a tour across the United States to sell war bonds and stamps and successfully inspired the American people to donate more than $130 million for the war effort. The Four Freedoms were inspired by former President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's famous speech of the same name and beautifully depict scenes from the American life that we so often take for granted. Americans all over the country were inspired to do their part, both by the Four Freedoms, which reminded them of the blessings we have simply because of our nationality, and by Rosie the Riveter, which convinced women of all ages to take part by joining the workforce. Rockwell's Rosie and other Rosies, such as J. Howard Miller's We Can Do It pop art poster, have continued to inspire women to break through society's gender boundaries and embrace themselves to this day. Rockwell's Rosie the Riveter is composed of a large diagonal flag with an unusually strong working woman balancing on a stool in the foreground. To fully view this piece, you must look up at Rosie, which makes her appear larger. The large flag backdrop voids the piece of most of its depth. This makes sense since it was intended for a magazine cover. The viewers must pull back the cover to find the depth. Rosie herself is fully figured and displays masculine muscles. Her face is turned up and to the side and a wire halo rests on her fiery red curls. With one tense hand, she grips onto her lunchbox. And with another, she daintily holds her half-eaten ham sandwich. The rivet gun's weight pulls on her lap and seems to hold her in place. Her large feet are easily crushing a copy of Hitler's infamous biography, Mein Kampf. Rockwell used thick brush strokes to create a perfect denim texture for Rosie's jumper. It looks rough to the eye, which contrasts with the stroke of her smooth skin. The piece is mostly red, white, and blue, fitting for patriotic propaganda and inspiring the American people to serve their country. Rockwell's Rosie was just one of many Rosies to convince American women of their patriotic duty, but it remains to this day as an icon of the American woman and her rise to the front lines of history. It has also become a symbol of American feminism and the strength and worth of every woman in society. I own a Rosie the Riveter action figure, and national museums across the United States sell Rosie apparel, posters, and memorabilia. She is the face of the 5 million women who entered the workforce between 1940 and 1945, compared to the 350,000 women in the armed forces during World War II. Many of these jobs were previously considered to be exclusive to men, but by the end of the war, fields such as aircraft manufacturing were female-dominated. Rockwell's art is most easily categorized by American realism for its visualization of daily American life. Rockwell's inspirations are clearly visible in Rosie the Riveter. Mary Doyle Keefe's feminine face has been married with Michelangelo's Isaiah in the Sistine Chapel. Rosie's headpiece forms a halo around her head like most early religious paintings added to visualizations of deified beings. I chose Norman Rockwell's Rosie the Riveter for many reasons. As a high school intern with the Education Department at Crystal Bridges, I frequently passed Rosie the Riveter in the 1940s Tinal Gallery. It has convinced me that greatness can flourish in the rural South, which has been historically more oppressive of women and less accepting of liberal ideas such as feminism than other American regions. 